This is the Jetson Bolt Pro and today I'm going to show you how to turn it into a two or even three seat bike and for the lowest amount of money because I am an unapologetically cheap Asian. I actually overspent and later in the video I'll show you how to avoid overspending. These seats work independently so I'll have a chapter for this seat and then I'll have a chapter for this seat. So starting off with this first seat right here. This is the U-Rider BKS-017A Easy Folding Kid Seat for a Bicycle. I got it on eBay for $17 plus tax, free shipping. It was around $20 total. It's designed for quick mount and dismount. If you look right here, it has a quick attach, detach. One slight problem is that if you're using this rear seat, you can see a problem that it's going to uh, it's going to hit the seat and is, it's essentially dead in place. Once you lock this, you have to install this one first and then install this one second. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do two seats. Otherwise, this isn't going to be a problem. So when you first get the seat, it comes like this. You're thinking, what the hell? There is a limitation with the seat. There has to be one exact angle and it's around... Uh, you know, 120 degrees or something, you'll get there. Um, and it has to be th at this exact angle. If it doesn't go in this exact angle, you cannot fit it onto your bike. So that is one of the other limitations. Here it is. You'll see what I mean in a second. Save yourself some trouble and put down this arm. This folding mechanism probably won't work anymore. That's just something you're going to live with. So you want your arm about seven inches up right here. And then you put it on like so. Just leave it. Now get this arm back up again. Remember I told you about that angle? It's because of this. There's hardly any gap right here. There's just a very small gap because this housing right here, it sticks out just a little bit. It's a very tight fit. Just put it that way, but it does fit. So that's not an issue. You won't be able to go to the very top because of the taper. So back down about an inch. Tighten this by hand so as far as you can go and then uh, it, it takes a little pressure. Just close it up. Now it's super tight and we are in place. Okay, you see there's a tiny little gap between there. It might even rub but there is a a gap between there and okay so there's a little bit of a problem now is that uh, this thing comes with the lamest pegs ever so you just have to add rubber bands but the legs uh, the pegs they don't go in place and another thing you have to adjust is this bolt I mean there's these slots where it can go it just simply goes to the very highest corner I mean it, it belongs to this side right here but you just put it on the highest corner and this thing is designed to rest in place and it just rests right on top of this and now you've got your seat it is stiff as heck I have put um, around 140 pounds on this I had both of my daughters sitting on this when I first got it because they both wanted to ride it. This arm, I found out it works best when it's about 90 degrees and when you're using this, what, this seat, there's one other thing you have to consider and it's this top bar is just unsafe. I mean, your kid is gonna sit close to the front right here and then this bar and this clamp you know, if they tip forward, they're going to hit their head and they're going to have a hole in their head. And that's, that's probably not a good idea. And what I did was I put this foam cap on. So this foam cap belongs to the wheel when you buy the Jetson. It's very stiff and dense foam. I'll show you how I put it on. Quite simple. You get a knife and you just do like a triangular notch, like this angle, this angle. And then now you have places where you can use a rubber band or for my purposes, I use a scrunchie. So you open this up, feed two rubber bands or three or whatever. So I'm going to, because I only have one thick and two thin ones, I'm putting three. 
close this back up. This foam padding already has a hole from the bolt. So we're just going to put it into that hole. And with the straps, the notches we did earlier, you just pull the rubber bands over here. As you can see, it's quite simple. You can see it doesn't, it has a tendency to get into place again. Nice and simple head protection for the little one. Before you get into this work, a lot of these uh, bolts will come already tightened. You want to loosen everything. And then you just want to tighten just a little bit so everything is still mobile. You don't want to do the tightening part until the finale. That's where you tighten up everything. Onto the rear is this rack. The one I got is from Rock Bros. Costs around $42. However, you probably do not need to spend $42. And there are other options I'll explain later in the video. But we're going to get started with this. And this seat is the top cabin. It just goes in like that and bolts on the bottom. But there are some things you'll need to know about the carrier. It comes with this clamp system. However, obviously it's too fat to even... It's too fat. It can't fit on here. On the flip side, the Jetson has a brake caliper screw right here. It's going to be too short because you want this arm on there as well. However, when you get this carrier, you get a longer bolt. And this thing bolts directly in. And it even, let me show you. See, it works directly. And even in the back, kind of hard to tell, but the brake caliper is cleared as well. It's just long enough for the thickness of this bar. So that is the first side. It's just plug and play. These extra hardware accessories, you toss them away. This side is slightly more concerning. There is a bolt, okay? It goes in directly. You see uh, the Jetson bike has these two holes and this one is gonna go through just fine. The bike itself, is pre-tapped so you just screw it in there is no rear nut however um you can certainly add the rear nut if you want to feel better i'll probably add it on yeah i'm putting it on the reason i put on that nut in the back is that because this bolt is actually thinner than this side this side is uh these are thicker bolts and they they're tapped in but since they're thicker, I don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, here's a problem. I have this arm screwed in here with the pannier holder. However, they are not supposed to share it. This arm actually belongs in here. So this will not carry the full specified uh, 110 pounds. I'm just warning you, it is very strong. However, that full weight capacity is not going to happen. But if you're considering what's going on back here, okay, the weight, the load of the weight is here and instead of here. This pivot is, is going to be really easy to break because the child is going to sit right here. And if the pivot's back here, well, that's, you know, that's um, a leverage of almost 12 inches. And if the child sits back here and right here the pivot is only like four inches so there's like at least three times holding capacity that's just my rough math into it i am an asian another reason why you can't adjust it much is because this arm right here is is kind of fat so um you cannot move it this way much and if you move it this other direction, well, you have this problem right here. This arm simply isn't long enough. Okay, so if you could move it to the left that way, then, yeah, you can get it into this spot, but then your arm is too short. On this side, you really can't move it because of this brake caliper. You see, it's right next to this arm already. So if you're trying to move this arm backwards to here, 
it's not going to happen. You're going to have to have like a, a custom arm that comes out from here, possibly up to here, and then attached to here. That's the only way you can make it happen. But other than that, from my testing, this thing does feel substantially strong and very strong because, like I said, the pivot point is right here and the child is right here so they're sitting right underneath the weight I mean right underneath this load bearer it's not gonna be an issue alright this is the final bolt of the install this is where you're gonna wanna tighten but before you even tighten there's something you wanna do okay because you don't want any pressure on this neck right here you wanna push this up push it up just a little bit see you wanna push it up so that all the pressure is going to sit on these arms. You don't want it sitting on the neck. So you want it to sit on the arms. You push it up and then you tighten it. Yeah, this thing is solid. Top cabin, rear seat. It goes in like this, you see, and there's a slight taper if you look at it. So you want to get it in the right direction and move it all the way to the front before tightening it. And there's a little problem. If you move it all the way to the front, it's actually too close to this metal bar. So you have to move it back by uh, half an inch or a quarter of an inch to get it working. But there's a problem now and that, you know, this e-bike was designed to be small and now it's sticking out by two inches. If you're okay with that, then just leave it. You're good. I'm not. This thing is coming off. I'm just going to have to saw it off. And so you just um, you mark an incision with a, a pen or, you know, just grab a screw. A physical marker like this there you go there's my mark somewhere there I just found out that this is a rivet so I'm gonna have to take a hammer and a screwdriver and just break this off and then I use self tapping screws afterwards probably around right here as it turns out I don't know how to remove a rivet so I'm gonna try it with the allen wrench right here Okay, so that was around two inches cut. I had to drill a hole. I had to drill two holes. Okay, so this has been filed after I cut it. Okay, time for the seat. Okay, the taper end goes this way. Let's see. Let's see how close I got it. Wow, this thing is, is budding right here at the end. I had like a five millimeters. It's extremely close to being over. It might be over once I start put, putting these on. This is a royal screw up. There is a longer one than the shorter one. So the longer one goes in the back, the shorter one goes in the front. I messed up. When you are putting on these brackets, make sure that they are turned up like a U. Both brackets, just remember, short one in the front, long one in the back. Final revision, I ended up taking this apart at the axle and this little peg does fit in the slot. On this other side, I moved it from this bolt down here. I took out the two washers and then I moved it to this rear back here. And now this just barely hits this thing right here, this uh, bolt. That's why I took out the washers. But other than that, it works just fine. This is enough that it just doesn't, it's not gonna unabruptly just fall on you. Yeah, these footrests are solid. I mean, it's, it's not a peg. A small kid can probably use it as a peg, but I would not suggest an adult uh, standing on this full force, it'll probably break. This seat up here, I did move forward. And so now this is in front of the seat. 
just saves that extra little space a centimeter. Another view, this is a self-tapping screw and it works just fine. So yeah, this thing can definitely support the weight. You know, I wouldn't use a full size person on the back. Although, yeah, it it feels good. I mean, I'm 170 pounds and it does feel fairly solid. Whoa! He wants to play with the fountain. Yeah, I don't like this. Come on, you go in the back. Lean forward or you're gonna fall, Jesse. Come on, put your foot up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just foot leave up. him. Why don't you use the throttle? This thing has pedals. So what I bought was this top cabin seat. It's 1650, not the end of the world. That's a pretty good deal, to be honest. And then I got this Rock Bros um, carrier, and this thing is 42.99. Well, let's go over to this one. This is a similar item that my brother-in-law got, and I recommend it to him because they look exactly the same. This one is twenty six ninety nine. Uh, yeah, so you're saving like teen seventeen dollars because this is not by Rock Bros. This is just a generic rear bike cargo bike carrier rack, and it has everything in it. Look at that! It has a copy of that mud flap. It has these these connectors right here, but it doesn't have the quick connect. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to be using the quick connect. In fact, you don't use this connection system at all. You just, that goes in the trash. And then this part is, is the same. This shape is exactly the same. The specs look similar. And my brother-in-law got this one instead and saved. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe. You know, all that good stuff. See you in the next one.